there is a change in the landscape in the research and development where before we had the triad of the European Union, the, the US and Japan, uh, and today we see emerging economies such as China, India, Brazil, South Korea coming very strong, uh, not only in the investment uh, that they have in, in uh, research and development, but also the number of researchers, the quality of the research, uh, and really the number of patents and, and the international prizes that, uh, that their researchers are getting. Uh, it's really a result of a long-term investment that India, China, Brazil, South Korea did in capacity building massive pro uh, programs, training at the master's and PhD level outside the country, inside the countries, uh, new institutions, attracting international expertise, uh, and, and really changing uh, over decades because it's not something you do overnight. It's not a two-year investment. It's really a decades of investment in capacity that now is paying off. There is another, another shift that, uh, that is also interesting that was in a way emerging in the last report. That was the, the importance of the uh, technologies for information and communication and their impact in the access uh, for, uh, to knowledge, to knowledge production, uh, practices and so on. And clearly in the 2010 report, what you see is that even countries that don't have strong economies, they are m able to participate much more in the production of knowledge, in the acquisition of knowledge, uh, due to these technological advant uh, advances. So technology is also shaping uh, the way science is being developed and done uh, all over the world. The issues we, we deal with today in science, they are not anymore local. Even when they appear to be local, they have either global implications or they are influenced by global trends. And therefore, uh, science stopped being something that is national to become more and more a much more complex, much more systemic uh, process of producing knowledge that, uh, that clearly implies that you have to have much more international collaboration in science projects. Clearly what we have seen in this report is that more and more countries give the right uh, place to science policies and science policies for development in their national agenda uh, and, and regional and continental agendas. And, and so hopefully uh, this trend will continue and strengthen. Clearly with some changes and shifts the way you do science policy, it's not anymore just at the national level, but it's really uh, science policy in a much more global environment and where global changes are really uh, creating uncertainties, not only in, in development, but in science itself. A and therefore, the process of defining science and innovation policies become therefore much more dynamic. Uh, you see a shift of governance in, in STI, in science and technology and innovation institutions, where society participates more uh, and clearly the second recommendation is then that is not only just science for society but we also need society for for science and and, sci and society have to become involved in the scientific debate uh, so that science can indeed serve better uh, humanity a and thirdly uh, the trend that we see of increasing investment in, in, in research capacity, in the higher education systems, and in the research uh, and development institutions, uh, that trend has to continue again for decades if we want really to have a much more equal world in terms of, of knowledge production, uh, knowledge access, uh, and uh, knowledge appropriation, and, and benefits of knowledge uh, to, to all societies in the world.